Hi, today we're going to be looking at how to connect an Access database to a, an ASP.NET web application using Visual Studio. Um, for this tutorial and a few more following dealing with data and data controls, I'm going to be using a simple Access database created in Access 2007. Uh, I've got that database open now and it's just composed of four simple tables, uh, soccer related tables. You'll see here that there's a team table that identifies several teams uh, from the English Premier League. There's a player table that identifies several players that play on these teams in the English Premier League. A uh, lookup table for positions and a lookup table for countries. Um, so this is the basic table, uh, basic set of tables we're going to be using in the database that I've called Soccer Teams, uh, with the examples today. So to get started, uh, I'm going to go into Visual Studio .NET. Uh, I'm sorry, Visual Studio 2008, and we're going to be uh, in this first tutorial connecting to the Access database and using a data grid control or what's now called a grid view control uh, to display uh, the results of an SQL select query from our database in a grid fashion on our web page. We'll also be looking at how to edit and delete records uh, using that same grid view control. Okay, so I'm going to close the database I had and it's assume, I'm assuming that you already have a um, new website created. Mine has been called Data Tutorial. And the first thing we're going to do is put the uh, Access Database in our App Data folder for uh, this uh, uh, Visual Studio project, so that we can access it more easily within our within Visual Studio. So in your My Documents folder, there should be a folder called Visual Studio 2008, and underneath that there should be a web, uh, folder called Websites. And in Websites, every time you create a new website in Visual Studio, it puts all the folder, all the files with that website in a folder uh, in the Websites folder. So I just created one called Data Tutorial, and there it is, and you can see the web config file, the default uh, ASPX content file, and our default ASPX VB file. Now the app data fi uh, uh, folder is used as a place to put data that then Visual Studio can then reference uh, within your project. So I'm going to open up the app data folder. I'm going to just copy that uh, soccer team's database off my desktop and put it inside the app data folder. So I've got that there. Now I also want to make sure that in Visual Studio that's been uh, recognized by the project. So to do that I'm going to go up and highlight the app data folder, right click on it and add an existing item. And it will open up and should open up in the folder for this project. You'll see the app data folder, open that up, click on soccer teams and click add. And now you should see underneath the app data folder in my project that database now shows up. Okay, so I've got the database in my project, uh, and, it's, and it's located in the project folder uh, on my computer. So what I need to do is uh, add a data source uh, and a data display control to my web page so that I can connect to the database and then show the data that I pull out of that database uh, on my web page. Now since I want to kind of do this so that things can be updated without posting back every time, I'm just going to add first a couple of AJAX controls uh, so that it uses AJAX to do things asynchronously. So I'm going to put on a script manager and I'm going to put an update panel. And so we'll use the update panel to place our grid view so that every time we click on the grid view it does it asynchronously without reloading the whole page. Now to get data into the grid view, what we need to do is put a grid view control on the page. I'm going to put it inside my update panel. Now I need to set some properties for my grid view. The first thing I need to do is to tell it where to get the data it's going to pull from the database uh, so that it can show it on the page. So I need to choose a data source. And I'll click on this and since none have been created yet I'm going to click new data source. And this will open up some selections. Uh, now since we're using an access database, your first inclination may be to use the access database data source type. But actually since this is a 2007 database, we want to just use the standard database uh, control or data source type. And you'll notice that I will have an SQL data source uh, identifier down here. So we click OK uh, and we want to do a new connection and it will ask us to find that uh, database. So I want to change the data source from a SQL Server database to an access database file and click OK. And then I want to locate that database. And if you browse, you should see that it's right there. Uh, it should open up right there underneath data tutorial, app data, 
there's the database file I just put in there. I'll click open. And then I want to test the connection. If I click test connection, it tells me that it was able to successfully connect to that database, so that's a good thing. So we'll hit OK. We'll hit OK again. And you'll notice that a new correction is, connection has been created. And if we click here, we can see the connection string. And so this is basically pointing it to that um, location, the, the location on my, on my hard drive. We'll hit Next. And what right here, what this does, if I hit next here, this saves the connection that we just created to our web config file. So then if we create other pages in this project, we can reuse this connection to access data from the database later. So I'm going to hit next. And it automatically updated the web config file and added that configuration, uh, the connection string to the web config file. Now, what I want to do in this uh, grid view is just real simple. I want to show the results uh, uh, of that player table, all the players I had listed in the database. Uh, so we're going to, we can either specify a custom SQL statement or we can use this wizard here to select the table and the rows we want out of it. So I'm going to select the table player and then I want to show uh, pretty much everything here. So I can click all the row names or, I, or all the column names or I can click the star and that will select everything. And so you see here the select statement that's created is select all from the player table. Uh, now there's some advanced things we can do and we'll get into that in the next few tutorials where we can use where clauses, order by clauses, and we can create other statements as well such as insert, delete, edit, and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and click advanced and click on this generate insert update and delete statements and what that's going to do is not only create this select statement but it's also going to create the statements the SQL statements needed to delete records edit records and insert records so if we want to use those later we can I'm going to hit next we can test the query and you can see here it did a test and pulled back the detail from the table and it's showing you the results here now I can hit finish and you notice when I do that a few things happen. The first notice that the table got updated with the column uh, headers to be the names of the fields in the database table. Also the sizes adjusted and the types adjusted based on what the, val what the, the value types of that data was in our database. Um, I want to adjust things a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to click auto format. Now auto format allows us to pick some themes to apply to our data grid. And so you can see this is a really easy way to make a pretty good looking uh, table of data without much effort. So we'll just pick, uh, for example, snowy pine and hit OK. So that updates it so we see it has now has a look to it that's a little bit better. Uh, I'm also going to uh, edit the columns and what I want to do now is just change the names of the column headings so it's not the literal uh, uh, attribute name uh, from the table but so that it looks a little bit better so I'm going to edit columns and we can pick select player first name and go to the header text and instead of player first name I can rewrite that as first name and we can go to player last name I can do the same thing Go to player team, position, and nationality. And all I'm doing here is just renaming the text in the header of our data grid. So you can see that got updated there. Okay, uh, now what I want to do is allow us to be able to do a few things with the data grid with some built in functionality it has. First, I want to let it be able to do paging. Now enabling paging, you'll notice down here there's a couple pages. What that means is that not all the records will be shown in one big page. It'll actually be divided into records of 10, sets of 10, and then you can page through those sets of 10 by clicking on the bottom to advance. I'm going to enable sorting, which now you notice this is underlined up here. This allows us to click on the column header and sort the data by that name. I'm going to enable editing, and I'm going to enable deleting. Now editing and deleting allows us to actually edit and delete records right in the using the data grid directly from the database. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I don't like this edit and delete listed as links. I want to make those look like buttons. So again I'm going to go back to edit columns and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. Oh I'm sorry to the top and find the command field. And I'm just going to change the button type to button and hit OK. 
Okay, so that's a pretty good looking uh, data grid. We've got, uh, we've updated our column names so that they make a little more sense. We've put a format in so it looks nicer. And we've added editing and deleting capabilities and we've used, added paging and uh, sorting capabilities. Now just one note, you can only add these edit and delete capabilities if you created the uh, insert, update, and delete SQL statements when you created the data source the way I did earlier in this, uh, in the tutorial. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this, and uh, you always hit OK here so that it can do debugging. And it'll take a second to load, and we'll see now we've got this nice looking data grid uh, on our page. And if I click through, I can page um, through the different versions of the uh, through the different records. So you'll see one through ten, eleven through twenty and 21 through 24. I can also sort the data by the column name, so if I want to sort by first name I can do that and it sorts all the data. I can sort by team, so all the Arsenal players that are top, sort by position, all the defenders are at top. Uh, if I want to edit, I can click on uh, edit, so maybe we'll edit Thomas Vermeulen. Maybe uh, instead of being from Belgium, maybe we want, we want to say that he's from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, and I can hit update and it updates and now you'll see there that the results have been changed and that indicates that it's been changed in the database. Uh, maybe I want to delete Thomas from Allen. If I do that, it goes away. So that's a pretty quick little tutorial on how to use a data grid. Um, and uh, one little thing here didn't work. It looks like the buttons didn't show up. I think the problem there was that I forgot to save it before I ran it. So I'm going to go back in here, uh, change the uh, columns back to uh, the command field back to being the button type of button, hit OK, and then now I'm going to save everything and run it again. And there, now we've got the buttons. So if I hit, for example, for Tim Cahill, edit, I can make this say Timothy and update. Okay, there you go. Just a quick little tutorial on how to use a data grid control with an access database in Visual Studio.net. Uh, the next tutorial we'll look at is how to use a uh, data uh, base to populate drop down lists and other list based controls in your uh, uh, web page. Thanks for watching. Uh, this video is made using the free open source uh, recording software called Cam Studio. Thanks.